9 foods that cause inflammation. Inflammation may be good or bad, depending on the situation. On the one hand, it's your body's natural way of protecting itself when you're injured or sick. It may help your body defend itself from illness and stimulate healing. On the other hand, chronic, sustained inflammation is linked to an increased risk of diseases like diabetes, heart disease, and obesity. Inflammation may occur in response to many triggers, some of which are hard to prevent, including pollution, injury, or sickness. Interestingly, the foods you eat may significantly affect inflammation in your body. Understanding which foods fan the flames may help you make smarter choices and keep the peace within your body. Ready to see what's on the list. Let's begin. 1. Sugar and High Fructose Corn Syrup Sugar and high fructose corn syrup are common in many diets. When consumed in excess, these sweeteners may significantly impact your body's inflammatory processes. After consuming foods high in sugar and high fructose corn syrup, your blood sugar levels spike. This spike prompts the pancreas to release insulin, a hormone that helps cells absorb glucose and lower blood sugar. However, frequent spikes in blood sugar and high insulin levels may lead to insulin resistance, a condition where cells no longer respond effectively to insulin. This lack of responsiveness forces the pancreas to produce even more insulin, contributing to a high insulin environment that stimulates the body's inflammatory pathways. Although inflammation is essentially a defense mechanism, it can become chronic when insulin levels are high. In the presence of chronic inflammation, the body produces more cytokines, which are inflammatory markers. These cytokines may cause oxidative stress, damaging cells and tissues throughout the body. This ongoing damage may contribute to the development and progression of various diseases, including arthritis and certain cancers. What's more, in a randomized clinical trial, in which people drank regular soda, diet soda, milk or water, only those in the regular soda group had increased levels of uric acid, which drives inflammation and insulin resistance. 2. Partially Hydrogenated Vegetable Oils Partially hydrogenated vegetable oils are commonly found in many processed foods, including margarine, baked goods, and snack items. These oils are created by adding hydrogen to vegetable oils, making them solid at room temperature. This process extends the shelf life and improves the texture of foods but has negative effects on health, primarily by promoting inflammation. When you consume foods containing partially hydrogenated oils, you introduce trans fats into your body. These trans fats incorporate into your cell membranes, altering their properties and functions. Normally, cell membranes are fluid and flexible, but trans fats make them more rigid and less responsive. This alteration impairs the cell's ability to communicate and function properly, triggering an immune response. The body recognizes the altered cells as a potential threat, leading to an inflammatory response. This is primarily mediated through the activation of signaling pathways that increase the production of inflammatory molecules like cytokines and prostaglandins. These molecules help fight perceived threats, but when chronically elevated due to regular consumption of trans fats, they cause persistent inflammation. This state of chronic inflammation is directly linked to the development of several serious health issues. For instance, in the cardiovascular system, the inflammation may contribute to the buildup of plaque in the arteries, known as atherosclerosis, which increases the risk of heart attack and stroke. The inflammatory response also affects cholesterol levels by increasing LDL bad cholesterol and decreasing HDL good cholesterol, further exacerbating cardiovascular risks. According to a study involving 486 participants, higher intakes of partially hydrogenated vegetable oils are associated with elevated concentrations of inflammatory biomarkers. 3. Refined carbohydrates. Refined carbohydrates, such as those found in white bread, pastries, and many snacks, are processed foods where the natural fiber has been removed. When you consume a meal high in refined carbs, your digestive system quickly converts these carbs into glucose, which then enters your bloodstream. The sudden rise in blood sugar prompts the pancreas to release insulin, a hormone that helps cells absorb glucose from the bloodstream and lowers blood sugar levels. However, frequent spikes in blood sugar and insulin may lead to what's known as insulin resistance. This condition means the body's cells don't respond properly to insulin, 
so the pancreas has to produce more and more to have the same effect. High levels of insulin and blood sugar are pro-inflammatory. They stimulate the production of free radicals molecules that may cause oxidative stress, damaging cells and tissues. This oxidative stress activates nuclear factor kappa B, a protein complex that plays a key role in regulating the immune response to infection. It acts as a switch to turn on genes that produce pro-inflammatory cytokines, increasing inflammation in the body. Furthermore, the continuous strain on the pancreas to produce more insulin may lead to type 2 diabetes. In addition to these, chronic inflammation may contribute to the development of certain types of cancer and neurological diseases like Alzheimer's, as ongoing inflammation may damage cells and tissues throughout the body over time. In one study, children and adolescents with cystic fibrosis who followed a low glycemic index diet for three months experienced significant reductions in markers of inflammation compared to a control group. Since refined carbohydrates have a high glycemic index, consuming them may raise inflammation. 4. Excessive alcohol. The process begins in the liver, where alcohol is metabolized. The liver breaks down alcohol using the enzyme alcohol dehydrogenase, which converts alcohol into acetaldehyde, a highly toxic compound and a known carcinogen. Normally, acetaldehyde is quickly converted into acetate and then into water and carbon dioxide for easy elimination. However, excessive drinking overwhelms the liver's capacity to process alcohol efficiently, leading to acetaldehyde buildup. This buildup not only damages liver cells directly but also triggers the liver to release inflammatory cytokines. These cytokines promote inflammation both within the liver and throughout the body. Additionally, excessive alcohol disrupts the function of the gut barrier, making it more permeable. This condition, often referred to as leaky gut, allows bacteria and toxins normally contained within the gut to pass into the bloodstream. The immune system recognizes these bacteria and toxins as foreign invaders, triggering an inflammatory response by sending more inflammatory cells to attack the invaders, which increases systemic inflammation. This systemic inflammation may lead to a host of health issues. In the liver, persistent inflammation may cause alcoholic liver disease, which may progress from fatty liver to hepatitis and eventually to cirrhosis. The inflammation may also exacerbate conditions like pancreatitis and increase the risk of gastrointestinal cancer. In one study, levels of C-reactive protein, CRP, a marker of inflammation, increased in people who consumed alcohol. Those who had more than two drinks per day had the highest CRP levels. 5. Processed meat. Processed meats, like sausages, bacon, and deli slices, are altered through smoking, curing, or adding preservatives to enhance flavor and extend shelf life. When processed meats are cooked at high temperatures, advanced glycation end products are formed. These compounds develop when proteins or fats react with sugar in the bloodstream, a process that occurs more frequently in foods prepared under intense heat. Once consumed, they may promote oxidative stress and inflammation by damaging body cells and tissues. This damage triggers the immune system to respond by releasing inflammatory cytokines, which are substances that signal and amplify the inflammatory response. Additionally, the preservatives and high salt content found in processed meats may lead to an imbalance in the gut microbiota, promoting the growth of bacteria that contribute to inflammation. Over time, this sustained inflammation may lead to metabolic disturbances. These disturbances include insulin resistance, which is a hallmark of type 2 diabetes, and alterations in lipid metabolism, which may increase the risk of heart disease. A study involving about 390 women showed that higher processed meat consumption was positively associated with inflammatory and metabolic markers in overweight and obese women. 6. Gluten-heavy foods. Gluten-heavy foods, which are prevalent in many diets, primarily include items made from wheat, barley and rye. Gluten, a protein found in these grains, may contribute to inflammation, especially in individuals with gluten-related disorders such as celiac disease. The process begins when someone sensitive to gluten consumes gluten-heavy foods. In these individuals, gluten triggers an abnormal immune response. In the case of celiac disease, this response damages the lining of the small intestine, impairing nutrient absorption and causing an influx of immune cells into the intestinal walls. 
These immune cells release a variety of cytokines and other inflammatory substances that lead to inflammation not only in the gut but throughout the body. This inflammation may lead to a range of health issues. In the digestive system, it may cause symptoms like bloating, diarrhea, and abdominal pain. Beyond the gut, systemic inflammation may contribute to more severe conditions over time. Moreover, chronic inflammation from gluten may affect brain health, leading to issues like brain fog, depression, and anxiety. It may also exacerbate symptoms in people with arthritis, as inflammation further irritates joints, causing pain and stiffness. 7. Aspartame Aspartame, a widely used artificial sweetener, may contribute to inflammation, particularly in individuals who are sensitive to this compound. When aspartame is consumed, it breaks down into three chemical components phenylalanine, aspartic acid, and methanol. For sensitive individuals, these breakdown products may disrupt the balance of chemicals in the brain and other parts of the body. Phenylalanine and aspartic acid, in particular, are amino acids that, when excessively present, may overstimulate nerve cells. This overstimulation may lead to an excessive calcium influx into the cells, which might cause a high level of free radicals unstable molecules that may cause oxidative stress. This oxidative stress may activate various inflammatory factors while reducing adiponectin, a protein that regulates glucose levels and fatty acid breakdown. These changes may lead to systemic inflammation, which might disturb the normal transport of glucose in the body, potentially leading to insulin resistance. Over time, it may lead to type 2 diabetes. 8. Fried foods Fried foods, like French fries and mozzarella sticks, are common favorites to many, but they come with significant health risks, primarily due to the way they contribute to inflammation. The process starts with the type of oils used for frying, which are often high in omega-6 fatty acids. While these fats are essential to the diet, an imbalance favoring omega-6 over omega-3 fatty acids may lead to the production of pro-inflammatory chemicals in the body. When foods are fried, especially at high temperatures, the oils undergo oxidation, a chemical reaction where the oils react with oxygen in the air to form aldehydes, ketones, and lipid peroxides. These byproducts are harmful to the body and may contribute to oxidative stress, a condition where there is an imbalance between free radicals and antioxidants in your system. Oxidative stress triggers the body to respond with an inflammatory process as it attempts to neutralize and eliminate these harmful compounds. Furthermore, the high temperatures used in frying may also alter the nature of the food itself. Proteins may become denatured and carbohydrates caramelized, producing advanced glycation end products or ages. As ages raise oxidative stress, they cause a number of stress-related transcription factors to become active. This in turn causes the production of pro-inflammatory and inflammatory mediators like cytokines and acute phase proteins. Moreover, inflammation may affect the joints, exacerbating conditions like arthritis and influence overall immune function, making the body more susceptible to infections and illnesses. Obesity is another major concern, as the high caloric content of fried foods may lead to excessive weight gain, which in itself promotes inflammation. 9. Ultra-processed food Ultra-processed foods are items that have undergone significant industrial processing and often contain additives like artificial colors, flavors, preservatives, and sweeteners. Several studies have demonstrated that a diet high in ultra-processed foods is associated with an increased risk of inflammation, a significant factor in the development of chronic diseases such as cardiovascular disease. Ultra-processed foods are typically rich in trans fats and saturated fats, which are known to induce inflammation. These fats may alter cell membrane structures and functions, leading to cellular stress and an immune response that involves the release of more inflammatory cytokines. Moreover, the preservatives and chemicals in ultra-processed foods may disrupt the gut microbiome, the complex community of bacteria in the digestive tract that plays a crucial role in overall health. An imbalanced gut microbiome may lead to increased gut permeability, commonly referred to as leaky gut. This condition allows bacterial endotoxins to escape from the intestines into the bloodstream, where they trigger systemic inflammation. 
Finally, chronic inflammation from a diet high in ultra-processed foods may also increase the risk of autoimmune diseases, where the body's immune system mistakenly attacks healthy tissues and even certain types of cancer, as inflammation may lead to DNA damage. Let's now understand inflammation a little bit more. Inflammation is the body's natural response to protect itself against harm. It's a crucial part of the immune system's reaction to infection or injury. When something damages your cells, the body releases chemicals that trigger a response from the immune system. This includes the release of antibodies and proteins, as well as increased blood flow to the damaged area. This process usually leads to redness, warmth, swelling, and pain in the affected area, which are the classic signs of inflammation. There are two main types of inflammation, acute and chronic. The acute inflammation starts rapidly and quickly becomes severe, usually appearing within minutes or hours. It generally goes away within a few days and is a healthy response to injury or infection. Examples include the redness and swelling that occur after a cut or scrape or the localized swelling when you twist an ankle. Chronic inflammation, on the other hand, is a slower, less noticeable type of inflammation that may last for months or years. It typically occurs when the body fails to eliminate whatever is causing an acute response or when it mistakenly attacks healthy tissue, as seen in autoimmune diseases. Chronic inflammation is linked to various diseases like arthritis, diabetes, heart disease, and cancer, making it a major concern for long-term health. Eat these foods to reduce inflammation. Certain foods are known for their anti-inflammatory properties, which may help counteract the chronic inflammation linked to numerous health conditions. 1. Fatty fish. Rich in omega-3 fatty acids, fatty fish like salmon, mackerel, sardines and trout are known for their powerful anti-inflammatory effects. Omega-3 fatty acids help reduce the production of inflammation-promoting compounds such as eicosanoids and cytokines. 2. Berries. Small but mighty, berries such as strawberries, blueberries, raspberries, and blackberries are packed with vitamins, minerals, and antioxidants. They contain anthocyanins, which have anti-inflammatory effects that may reduce the risk of disease by combating oxidative stress. 3. Broccoli. This cruciferous vegetable is high in sulforaphane, an antioxidant that fights inflammation by reducing your levels of cytokines which drive inflammatory processes. 4. Avocados A superfood rich in magnesium, fiber, and heart-healthy monounsaturated fats, avocados also contain carotenoids and tocopherols, which are linked to reduced cancer risk and less inflammation. 5. Green tea Known for its high antioxidant content, green tea contains a substance called EGCG, EGCG inhibits inflammation by reducing pro-inflammatory cytokine production and damage to the fatty acids in your cells. 6. Peppers Bell peppers and chili peppers are loaded with vitamin C and antioxidants that have powerful anti-inflammatory effects. They also contain capsaicin in chili peppers and quercetin, which may reduce inflammation and oxidative stress. 7. Turmeric Often found in curries, this spice contains curcumin, a powerful compound that has been shown to decrease inflammation in diabetes, heart disease, and other illnesses. Curcumin is especially effective in reducing the markers of inflammation linked to chronic diseases. Each of these foods may contribute to chronic inflammation through various mechanisms, impacting overall health. By understanding and moderating their intake of these items, individuals may better manage inflammation and enhance their well-being. If you experience different health issues after consuming these foods, you should immediately visit your healthcare professional. Today we learned about all the foods that may cause inflammation, but did you know that there are many distinct foods that may help you deal with different health issues? Want to find out more? Watch 12 Superfoods That Help Get Rid of Belly Fat Fast or watch 17 powerful superfoods that reduce your uric acid levels. You may watch either or both of them. How many of the earlier mentioned foods are currently in your diet? Let us know in the comments section below.